This is Dustin Madison's Supply Chain Podcast. I recently had the opportunity to talk with William Cure about ERP systems in supply chain planning and implementation. William is a certified SCM change leader with over 40 years of hands-on experience. We discussed how to define ERP systems in supply chain planning, the reasons why we need ERP systems, the problems faced with implementation, and how to successfully implement a new ERP system in a corporation. In the interview that follows, William will introduce some key concepts and share insights gained from his extensive experience with ERP systems and supply chain planning. Two noteworthy lessons include the importance of getting people involved in the change process and following the 80% rule. My first question is, can you um, define ERP systems in supply chain planning? Certainly. Uh, I define ERP systems in supply chain management as a tightly integrated series of modules, software modules, that all integrate back to the financial side of the business because every business out there, regardless of made you know, whether they're uh, for-profit, non-profit, manufacturing, whatever, has to report their financials to their stakeholders. So everything ties back to the financials. And then based on the kind of industry you are, and typically in supply chain management, these kind of companies would be manufacturing, possibly distribution, logistics companies, those are the big ones, then would select the the modules that fit their business model and go through the implementation process. So if you're a manufacturing company, obviously you would select different modules than if you were primarily a distribution company. All of these have their origins from an earlier system. uh, ERP was first coined as a phrase in mid-1990s. They all come from uh, uh, the... MRP and MRP2 systems that were created starting in the early 1960s. Software was developed in the 70s and 80s, and then really uh, an explosion happened in that industry in the 80s and 90s. And now pretty much every company out there has some type of ERP system. So that would be how I define ERP systems in the supply chain management industry. Can you talk about why we need ERP systems? Well, again, you've got to be able to report financials, and you want to make sure you have a common set of information. And every supply chain company I know of is basically geared towards planning, scheduling, forecasting, whether it's manufacturing or distribution. And it's a structured way of using, especially for manufacturing companies, the power of MRP-based planning, which looks at your bills and materials, looks at the inventory file, looks at your planned orders coming in, purchase orders, shop orders that you've already got scheduled, and then based on your master production schedule where you enter the customer orders, goes through a series of planning steps for materials and capacity to make certain that you're planning these according to the due dates and the lead times for the various components that you have to produce. And this can cover everything from made-to-stock companies to engineer-to-order and everything in between. So without a formalized planning system in place that's highly integrated and highly automated, most man- most uh, companies of any size just couldn't do that. There's just too much data and too many different things that have to be tightly integrated. Can you share with us some problems that you faced um, and how you've overcome them? Probably the biggest single problem that I've run into, and I've, to quantify this, in my supply chain career, which is now over 40 years, um, I've helped to implement everything from selecting through implementation uh, close to 40 different ERP, MRP2 systems. Probably, unfortunately, the most common problem that happens is that companies do a combination of things 
where they select a new system. Hopefully they do their due diligence and select something that is a good fit for their processes. But then almost immediately, instead of investing time in uh, company funds in training their people on how to use this new system, they almost immediately start modifying that new system. And the earlier they start that process after they've selected, uh, it's almost guaranteed that what they're doing is modifying it to make it look exactly like what they have. If what they have is working that well, why are they spending? Uh, larger corporations can literally spend hundreds of millions of dollars to select and uh, completely implement a new ERP system corporate-wide. So why are they going through all that effort, spending all that time and money, if all they're going to do is duplicate what they have? But far too often that happens, which then ends up with a project that is doomed to failure. And, uh, you know, in my background, I'm a certified project manager along with my uh, supply chain credentials. And you judge the success of projects classically based on what's called the triple constraint. Every project has a set of deliverables. This is what we're going to do. Uh, you have a time frame, and then you have a budget. And when you get into making modifications, when you get into adding a bunch of things, you've got to then go back and look at your project plan and make sure that you're incorporating that into the project plan. Far too often it doesn't, so you may have a project that implements the system, but it's way over budget and way over time because we haven't taken the time to go through the change process. Along with that, the other big problem is, of course, you're making changes. And the best way I've found to do that is incorporate the people in the process early on and keep them involved to help you make sure you're defining this and that they feel like they're part of the change process. Uh, people tend to not like making changes, but if they're part of determining what the change is going to be, it's much easier than to get them to buy into the change. So I try and incorporate people into this. I use the uh, classic uh, lean technique of doing, uh, basically going through and, and looking at your processes and doing value stream mapping. I think that's one of the better tools that's out there. So there's a number of things which end up then with projects that take way too long, spend way over budget, and if you're the project manager, that's not a good project to be involved in because that's a good way to end up getting fired in the process, and it's happened to people because they didn't manage the budget, they didn't manage, manage what was happening, and uh, it may have been successful from what was delivered, but it took way too long and cost way too much. That's not a successful implementation. Can you uh, share with us how how you do implementation? Well, I, first of all, I have a set of uh, standard um, approaches that I use. I've got done, as I say, quite a few uh, ERP implementations. I try and select the core features first. I encourage my customers to implement the system as standardly as you possibly can and avoid doing modifications till we've got the 80% functionality, which is why, what I always suggest to my customers, they need to try and uh, select a system that will do 80% of their business practices pretty much out of the box. Uh, then go through the process of implementing it in a time. And uh, for a major corporation, this can be a multi-year project that I always break up into different phases so that we have control over what happens, what sequence of events goes. Typically speaking, you implement the financials first because that's the core of any ERP system that's out there. So you go through and implement general ledger, ARAP, finance, the uh, human resource type modules. And then normally speaking, companies will tend to implement their order processing functionality along with purchasing, 
Uh, if they're a heavy manufacturing company, they would want to implement the master planning and MRP modules along with the um, modules then that control purchasing and what happens on the shop floor along with the feedback paths. Uh, there's a number of other modules that companies today are implementing. So basically, you've got to go through and prioritize it. But I always emphasize, let's, let's implement 80% first, as is, and then train people on the new system. Make sure they understand what they can do. Because again, what they're probably going to find out if they've selected wisely is the new system actually has more features and capabilities. It just looks different than what they have in place. And they need to understand what the strengths are and be trained on this. And the money that uh, they spend on modifications to the system is probably much better spent on training people. I'm a very firm believer in training and education. So let's get the standard parts in first. As we go through, let's do it, make sure we keep track of any suggested modifications that are brought up, and then go through a very detailed cost justification process to identify those that we do have to do. And most companies will make some modifications to their system, but we need to control it. So identify what those major ones are, and then go through and make certain that there isn't the functionality isn't there and it's a matter of restructuring the reports and screens rather than actually changing. But if you go through and make modifications, make absolutely certain that you do include the time and funding and resources necessary to do the documentation that is required, both technical documentation so that the IT folks then, if the software breaks, and it always does sooner or later, when it breaks, we understand what the new functionality is so that we have a good chance then of coming back online very quickly, but also in user documentation to make sure that we have the new screens, the new formats, et cetera, in place and the new process flows. And the ones that I've seen that hold with that and keep things as standard as they possibly can usually implement the system much faster and get a much better return on investment. Because no matter how you slice it, when you spend the money that you, the, the level of money and time that it takes to select and implement a new ERP system, you better be able to get a return on investment within a reasonable time frame or, you know, you're, you're spending company funds unwisely. So you need to identify why we're doing this, what metrics are we going to put in place, and as a project manager, make sure you're keeping track of that and reporting back to the stakeholders in the project on a regular basis. Where are we at? What have we accomplished? What's ahead of schedule? What's behind schedule? And you know, what are the major things that we've accomplished as part of doing this? And when you close out the uh, each one of the different segments of the project, make sure you go through and do the very uh, detailed analysis, what worked, what didn't work, so that we can then not make the same mistakes one more time. So I think you have to structure it accordingly. You have to understand how to manage people in a matrix management situation because very rarely do the people doing the implementation work for the project manager. Normally speaking, they work for other managers in the corporation, so they have other things to do. Hopefully they get put on full-time assignment to this, but sometimes they are not. So there's just a number of things that you have to be aware of as an ERP project leader and communication and make sure you have a good plan in place and realize just like uh, I think it was General Patton was quoted as saying, planning is absolutely essential once you put a plan in place, uh, you've got to be able to adapt the plan because things do change. So you've got to go through and keep up with what's happening. And when you discover that you didn't budget enough time, go through a detailed analysis. Uh, you know, can we make up this time? How, how did we make this mistake? We don't want to make it again.
So there's just a number of things that you have to keep up with. And uh, like I say, I've been very blessed to be part of either as a project manager or as a team member or as the uh, uh, program manager in a situation where we're implementing many systems throughout the company. And the uh, bottom line is, you know, you can be successful at this, but you've got to make sure you get the people involved. And sometimes you do have to say no. We can't cost justify that. And my last question is, can you provide a brief background of yourself? Yes. Uh, basically, I've got a little over 40 years of working in the supply chain management industry. Early on, we called it operations management when we were primarily talking about controlling what happened within our internal supply chain. Uh, I spent about 10 years working for companies here in the Houston area. When I left uh, manufacturing, I was director of materials for a company here in Houston. I got into consulting work, went to work for Oracle, worked for a couple of different J.D. Edwards business partners, uh, started my own company. Uh, I've had two different uh, consulting companies over time. Uh, I'm very heavily involved currently in teaching APIX certification classes. And I'm very blessed to have all the current APIX certifications, all three of them at the fellow level, along with one that uh, was created but no longer supported back in the 90s. I'm also a certified project manager and a certified scrum master. And mo most of my career has been working in, either directly or indirectly, in the supply chain industry, um, all different kinds of companies, um, everything from shop floor expediter to director of materials, and then uh, working in consulting. I've, at one point in time, I was regional implementation manager for a company at the tail end of the mainframe era, or I had 17 M MRP implement, MRP2 implementations going on at the same time. So I've been very blessed in my career. And uh, thank you again for sharing today, Bill. All righty. 